Hello guys, welcome to my channel Eva Gas Online. Today I have Daniel Kisi Somwa who is actually going to share his visa interview experience in Ghana. Hello Daniel, can you tell us more about yourself? Thank you very much Evans for this opportunity. So my name is Daniel Kisi Somwa. I'm a second year master student of geography at the University of Arkansas. I also work as a teaching assistant where I teach human geography and world regional geography. And my research interest basically lies in urban geography and spatial analysis using GIS and remote sensing tools. Thank you. Oh, okay. Nice one. I'm glad to have you. And also, I'm very glad that you got time to talk and speak with me. So okay, I, yes, I'll just move to my first question. What actually motivated you to apply? to a master's program in the United States? So it has always been my dream to further my education in the US. So after right after my national service in 2021, I had the passion to further my, my studies, as I said earlier. So I had many colleagues and I had seniors who were in the state. So I basically reached out to them to help me and to take me through the process. So they helped me and like I started the process. So I was start, I started looking for schools that offered geography as a master's program and also had a form of good funding. So I was researching, researching, researching and by God's grace, I concluded on applying to the University of Arkansas. So even though I had many schools that I applied to, about seven schools, mm. but by God's grace, I had a fully funded scholarship at the University of Arkansas. That's how come I got myself over here. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Nice one. So you got your admission letter from University of Arkansas. So what, right. what was the next step for you? What What did you do after that? So in ending April, I had, had the message from the University of Arkansas of a congratulation message the way I had my admission letter and my I-20. So I was very, very happy. So I had to quickly start my application, my interview, my visa process. So the next step was to get a date for my interview. So I started with my, the application. So in order to start the application, you need to get, you need to pay a fee called the MRV fee. And this MRV fee comes with a transaction, it comes to receipt with a transaction code. So based on the transaction code, that's how you, you'll be able to create this account in order to get a date. Because and then getting a date in Ghana was very difficult. So if I didn't start early, getting a date uh, before my, when school starts, that, that was in, I guess, 2022 would be quite difficult. So right after in, in, in pre, I started my application. So I went to a GT bank to pay for this MRV fee. And I then it was around $160. And I had basically like a senior who had more knowledge about all this stuff. So he helped me in filling the application and booking like the dates. So that was like my next step after getting my I-20 in my admission letter. Oh, okay. Nice one. So for those of you who don't know what the MRV fee is, I think uh, the full meaning is machine readable visa fee. And um, in 20, I think in 2023, that is when there was an increase. So right. now it's not $160. Now it's $185. So you have to put that in mind. So fast forward, you got your... I-20, you now went to GT Bank to pay your MRV fee. You right. have your receipt now. You use that to actually open the portal to hunt for date in Ghana yeah. because date hunting in Ghana for visa interviews is actually difficult. But then, you know, people confuse themselves like with the service fee. Do you, did you pay your service fee before using the MRV receipt to apply for date or you pay the service fee at a later part. And though for those of us who don't understand what the service fee is, it's also student exchange visitor information system fee. And um, both the MRV and the service fee are monies that you have to pay to the US government. And I think with the service fee is also $350 that you have mm -hmm. to pay. And mostly you have to get somebody in US to pay that one right. for you. So mm -hmm. did you pay for that in addition to the MRV fee before you started hunting for date or you just use the MRV fee receipt to hunt for date. Enlighten us about that. Okay, so this all these two fees are very important and they are part of this application process. But the MRV fee it's like like the what is needed in order to 
create an account for your interview. And I, I tell my friends that just focus on the MRE fee first as before the service fee, because the service fee is a payment that you, you will need before go, going for the interview. And without getting an interview date, there's no, there's no way you go for the interview. So with the service fee, two days or three days before your, your interview dates, you can just pay, ask someone outside, outside the country to pay for you and you're, you're good to go. So just focus on the MRE fee to get the code and not create an account to get a date for the interview. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And did you face like any challenges when you were doing all these application, including filling your DS-160? Yeah. So yeah, yeah many challenges are associated with, with it because like it's my first time. So you know, basically some of like the construction of the sentences and in a place where like do, do we need some answers or something get an answer for that question would be quite difficult so i faced like a, a lot of challenges but fortunately i have seniors who had more knowledge about this thing so if ever i face this challenge i just contact them they're like hi senior like i'm facing this challenge please what, what, what do you think about it and they just told me and i just move forward and go ahead and will it be advisable to um, give your DS-160 form, like the draft, to somebody to review for you and check, let's say, the coherence and the consistency, if everything falls in place. Like, will it be advisable? I think you, you can't just get up and give your draft to anybody because you don't know what the person can do with your draft. So do you advise people giving it to third parties to review? Yeah, so I always tell my colleagues that you should take control in filling the ds one t at first, don't give your DS-160 to anyone to fill for you. Take control and, and fill it. So if you don't understand anything, just contact someone. And some, some people, uh, 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 people that you can contact are basically maybe like your seniors who are like outside the country and ahead of you. Like where who are ahead of you, who, who had like the same opportunity of getting a fully funded scholarship and they are outside the country. Like they have knowledge because like they did it and like they they have all answers to like a, a, like everything. So you can contact all of them. So in a situation where maybe like you don't have like anyone, you have your professors, you have your lectures around, you can just ask them and like they are willing because most of these professors and lectures have traveled and they have more knowledge about all these things. Yeah. So let me chip this in. So during my time, I realized that some people actually rushed in paying the service fee in addition yeah. to the MRV fee. And in in doing so, they also um, hurriedly like filled their DS one sixty and submitted, you know. And maybe these were people that had two months interval for their yeah. visa interview date. I think that was really not advisable because of some of the experiences I encountered. You should always fill your DS one sixty and give to people you trust to cross check for you. And after that, you all always have to make sure that you um, keep it and submit it 48 hours before your interview. That is what I did. And my friends also did a similar thing and it actually worked for them Be because at times you rush in filling the DS-160 and later you give to somebody to review or maybe later you chance on a video or a message or an information somewhere and you realize that you actually made a mistake somewhere. And you know, at that moment, you've already submitted. Though you can sometimes retrieve one way or the other, which is a bit complicated. I think the best thing to do in filling your DS-160 is fill it and give to people to review, people that you trust. And after they are done reviewing, make sure you wait. Don't submit it until 48 hours before your interview date, then you can submit to the embassy. You um, tell us, so after you finish all of these and you know hunting for date, I know getting dates in Ghana is difficult, especially yeah, when this COVID-19 started. Like, it's really, really yeah. difficult because you can apply for an interview date in 2023 and you'll be given, like, a date in 2025, 2026. So yeah. how many chances can you reschedule your visa appointment date? Thank you. So you have three chances in scheduling your appointments. So when you start, when you start creating accounts, automatically you get an auto automatic date and most uh, at my time like 2022 the automatic date was 2025 so you get an, uh, uh, so after getting like that or like automatic date i would say like automatic date because it's the date that like the like the system will give you and then so after that you have three more chances to reschedule so after the 
the rate access elapses, like the only option is to get a new MRV fee receipt to get this transaction code to create a new account. That's the only option you left. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. So guys, if you don't understand anything, um, as we speaking and sharing our experiences, you can just put your thoughts or your comments in the comment section and I'll be glad to answer all your questions. So Daniel, you, you finished filling your DS-160 and you got a date. Date hunting in Ghana, very difficult. I believe you joined some WhatsApp group in order to hunt right. for date. Yeah, so on the D-Day, like the night before your visa interview, how was the feeling like? Yeah, so uh, like the night before the my interview day, it's, it was all, all, all about praying. Yeah, it's all about praying and looking up to God. And even though like I, I, I was... I, like I was, even though I was uh, preparing, I was still practicing, 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 practicing. Like it was less practice at then, and it was more praying because I had about one month to prepare, and I, like I, I, I knew, I, I, I knew what I, I knew my story. I knew the story I've created when, like, the view asked me like this question, this question. I knew what I'm supposed to say. So, I, like, that's when like the right time to start. Practicing, seeing this, seeing this, seeing this, seeing this, like, it, and then like must look, it, it will bring a form of pressure, like a me or something. So there, like that time, it's all about just relax and just pray, 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 pray. So and then yeah, I, like I was with my family and yeah, so like they were helping me pray and just told me to just relax, and just. Yeah, so I slept, I slept, and I woke up uh, because my interview uh, time was seven a.m. So I woke mm, up around five. It was very early. Uh, so I went to take my bath, did everything, prepare, and took my documents and ordered an Uber to the like, U.S. Embassy. So when I got to the center, because it was my first time over there, and like I was amazed looking at like a building and like the environment, the civil environment. I said, "Wow, <laughs> this, this is a nice building. Yeah, this yeah. basically looks like a U.S. Embassy. Mm, this mm. Looks also like, like a U.S. A, like a, a U.S. touch. Yeah. Mm. Right, a so touch maybe, of maybe, U.S." A touch of US, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So with that, like your your transcript. Sorry for cutting you. Your transcript. Did you try to memorize and how 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 did you do that? Because I know a lot of people try to do the popular term we know in Ghana, like chew and pour, where they try to memorize word for word, and you know at times they go to the embassy and they kind of forget. How was it for you? Yeah, so I I would say like I, I didn't do like any form of two and poor because like I, I knew like my story. If like maybe like I'm asked, maybe like how many schools do you apply to? Uh, there's no way I, I, I should do it two and poor and you know, like why are you applying to like the master's program of, of geography? Like I, I know like the reason why I apply like to like the master of science geography program because I knew what the like would do for me so i, I didn't do any for two and poor and and, and i advise my friends that like if you are doing two and poor and you reach like the center and you are asked by the view to answer like this question when you forget one one bit like it's basically like destroys everything yeah. so just own the story so like the term i always tell them own what you are saying just own it Let, let's be part of you just uh, don't let it don't let like the like the book in, in which you wrote all this transcripts in like determine what you're going to say. Just own it because you wrote everything and so just know it like everything and just don't just do it when poor walking mm. around then saying same thing because like you know everything you're here. Just know what you are wow. you're going to do. Yeah. I really love that. Right. And don't try and chew and pour. Because I think my time I also did the same. I didn't do chew and pour because I had like almost four months or five months to prepare for my visa interview. And whenever I'm going to bed, I'll be, you know, just repeating it. So that at the very um day where I would have to present what I have, it wouldn't be like I'm reciting anything. The person who would who have this interview with me would actually know that I know what I'm about and I know what I'm going to US to actually do. So thank you very much for that key. I believe those watching will take a very key point from this suggestion. And the embassy, you do your check-in. I believe you submitted certain documents. I'll do a video and talk about how you can actually fill your DS-160 and also the kind of documents that you need to submit to the embassy. But fast forward, you check in everything and the moment you were in the line, which you knew that, okay, as for this 
this line that I'm in, or as for this queue that I'm in, this is the final queue. And this is the queue that I'm going to see my view and be asked certain questions pertaining to my journey. So then what was going through your mind? Like any experiences, any unexpected um, situations or any surprises? What was the experience like in the room? Also, like the room is basically... So like, uh, uh, like, uh, like I should be frank, like, yeah, like there's tension in the room. Yeah, tension. There's, yeah, like there's tension, like the US embassy room. Yes, yeah. there's tension because, yeah, like, because, yeah, because like you see, you, you see many people and I'm sure you're, you're going to see your friends, you're going to see your seniors. Or, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and like, that, that's not, like, that's not a place to see and when you see a friend, like you start conversing with a friend, hi, Charlie, and what's up? And then, no, 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 like let's in a place where like we we invest because it, it's like it's a serious ground and like the it's a, like the security uh, very tight. Zone, it's very 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 tight. So like you can't just go and fool around because you've seen your friend. So you are just shouting out there. Mm. So when I go to the place, so after uh, going through like the check in with my DS one team, my passports and like everything, I think I was uh, like a 18th person on the line. So like you could see like everyone in the line was basically focused and like, you see, like you don't see like anyone talking uh, you, you, you see uh, people look down you could see uh, people saying things like on their lips that's basically you're praying and yeah so with my I was just basically looking through the window because I just wanted to free my mind I don't want to look at anyone so I was looking through the window looking outside so when like the interview like the interview started like the video came around so when the first person went and asked like the room is like the place echoes. So if like the viewer speaks, everyone in the room hears what the viewer says. So I think the first person went and the viewer, what the viewer said was, I'm sorry, I can't mm. apply. I can't, I, I can't prove your ear. So it is it, basically brought, uh, for the, the tension in the room uh, went high. Yeah, because... Was, hey, like this one, like this one, I started rejection. I started. I think the second person had this approval, approval. And so it's it, so like the line was moving, line is moving, and you see a third person rejection, fourth person rejection. So when I, it got to my turn, the eighteenth person. So I had the black American. So when I went to him, so he just asked for my documents, and I passed him my documents. So I just breathed in and I breathed out, and I just relaxed. So he was basically looking through my documents and he, he was looking on his desktop because he had access to my ds one stick. So he was looking through and flipping through. So the first question he asked me. The DS-160 was, that you submitted 48 hours before the interview. Right. And also, so like he had access to it. Yeah, I wanted to chip in this. What were the documents that the VO requested for? Okay, so he asked for my passport and my I-20. Your passport and your I-20. I-20, okay. yeah. Okay, so continue. So what was that moment that you realized that things were actually, you know, you are in front of the view, you are feeling tense, yeah. people ha have been rejected, and now it's yeah. your turn, you are there, and the view took your document. And what was that one question that, you know, got you your visa? Yeah. So even though, like, I, I was uh, prepared for, like, any kind of questions, so I was waiting for him to ask me. So about uh, 20, 20 seconds, like, he, he wasn't saying anything. He was just looking through his documents and I was saying, well, why? Like, I want this man talk. So he was basically looking through my documents. So the first question he asked me was, I had the idea about the, the universal of Akenso. So I just relaxed and I beat him, beat out, and I just started with my answers. So I just told him I did my research because, because like the research, like the term research that I said was very key was these viewers like they, they, they want people who like doing research. They don't want people it depends on someone or maybe like depends or yeah, yeah, it depends on someone for an information or something. So it means like I took charge of for what I was doing. So I did my own research. So I told him I did research through grassschool.com, uh, Google, and uh, like uh, scholarshipopportunities.com. And I had access to many universities that offered uh, the master's program of geography. And and University of Arkansas was basically part of the list. So I filtered the results further to schools that had a form of good funding. So that's how come I concluded on the University of Arkansas. And so after saying after saying this, like he didn't say anything, 
and he was just he was still on his laptop on his desktop sorry so the next question he asked me was have you traveled before and i said no and he asked me do i have my my undergrad transcript over here and i said yes and i just gave him my undergrad transcripts so he was basically looking through and as he was looking through he was looking at my face and uh, yeah, like even like I, uh, like I was feeling of I was feeling a form of tension. I was also looking at his face, and he, yeah, I, I could see he like, yeah, like he, he was nodding. But he was nodding. I said, so the next thing I heard from him was him gi giving me my documents and adding a white document. And he said, take this white document. Mm -hmm. And this white document had all the instructions at when at where I can get my I can get back my passport with my visa pasted in it. So that's basically like a, a DHL uh, services in Ghana or centers in Ghana. So uh, that, 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 that was that concluded that like yeah, my this one has been approved, my visa has have been approved. Mm -hmm. So I just took all my documents and went outside. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I could do was just kneel down and thank my God because mm -hmm. it was all about God because I I, I, I didn't know what so I, I said. Before before even it, it even got to that. You know, I know whenever consular asks you, have you um, traveled before or give me your transcript, you know, those personal questions, it's kind of leading to um, them trying to approve your visa because if your, your visa is not going to be approved, you know, they are not going to ask you, is this your first time traveling or, you know, that kind of question. So I think mm -hmm. and the fact that you told him you made your research and did this, like you trying to let him know that, it was you that started this whole grad school journey and you did your own research. You didn't depend on anybody. I think that did um, a lot of magic for you. Got your white paper, your visa approved and um, you got out of the embassy. You thank God. Then what, what happened is like, how was the feeling like? You struggling all this yeah, month yeah. and all of a sudden you go get your visa approved to United States to pursue your master's. Like, how was the feeling like? Yeah, so yeah, so like it's like a, like a dream come true because it has always been my dream to further my education. Yeah, so get my visa being a meaning, yeah, like I, I'm pursuing what I've always dreamt for my childhood to pursue my studies in the US. So I just went out of the embassy and were you able to work? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so because from like the embassy to like the station, like the uh, uh, total station, yeah. was was about a, a ten minutes walk. So I had to walk. So yeah. I walked. So even like I was, I, I was going. I was that's around uh, cantonment area leading to thirty seven. Um, yeah, yeah. 37, 37, yeah, like the station. station yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I was smiling, 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 cause hey. So when I, cause I, yeah, I, I wanted to like reach home like in like the nearest minute. I, I know like and then i didn't want to go down uber to like yeah okay so, uh, so when i went to like the district station i just sat in one of the like the trotro and mm -hmm. i was like it, it, so it is it, like it, it wasn't like a full, full car so it's what like the car wasn't in, like in, in, in like its full capacity yeah. yeah so when like the uh, mate was loading you see he was basically take, uh, taking like a long time because mm -hmm. like there was people coming so i just uh came down the car and I, 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 so I took, I told myself, like, let me start working. Like, by all means, I'll get a car that will, like, pick me on the way to my house. So, as my, my dream has come true, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it yeah, it yeah, was yeah. a good feeling, because, yeah, because, like, putting a foot in something that, like, yeah, you, you, you attain, and it's bringing fruit for you. Yeah. Automatically, see, like, that feeling, because. Oh, okay. Yeah, great. Yeah. Your passport was taken at the embassy, so you didn't come home with your passport. You rather came no. with a white sheet, right? Yeah, white and sheet, how right. many days did it take you to get a message from the embassy that your visa was actually ready at DHL? Yes, yeah, so, so I had a message in the next five days to come for my passport. And my, the DHL I chose in my, when I was filling the application was intercredit because at then I was still a teaching assistant. The Department of Geography and Regional Plan in the University of Cape Coast. So Cape Coast was near Takrade, so I just chose Takrade. So five days after when I had a message, I, I just uh, boarded a car to the Takrade DHL office to take up my passport. Okay, Daniel, that's been an insightful um, journey, and I hope 
your stay here in the US over one year and some months has been very fruitful. Maybe we're going to do another video and talk about your experience in US and how the educational system is here and back home, like, like making some one or two comparisons. Is there any similarities or any differences that you can share with my viewers? So one advice that you give to prospective students who are currently at the visa interview stage, people who have gotten their I-20s and they are applying, what would be that one advice that you give to people back home? Thank you, Ivans. The advice I, I would give is persevere and determination because all this process is quite tiring and time consuming because even getting a school and starting this application process, like the in interview, uh, Partisan, because it, 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 it's a lot of time, mm. and like the tension keeping at the interview room, it, it's a whole lot. So just persevere and just determine that, like, I, I, I'm going to get this and just get like this positive mindset, positive mindset, just get a positive mindset. Yeah, I have many friends who, when their identity came, they had the, like a 50 percent more funding. I just told them like, don't lose hope, just be positive about it that like yeah you you you, you get your visa don't look like maybe i'll get a 50 percent so like i'll be rejected or something get like this positive mindset and this positive mindset to basically take you further in life thank you okay thank you very much so guys if you have any question put it in the comment section and i'll be glad to answer them thank you very much for allowing me to interview you and also giving us part of your time i really appreciate and i wish to connect with you in future and do more interviews about this graduate school journey so have a nice day and um, take good care of yourself you're welcome bye